Dr. Mullen. The, min the ministry that has preached the gospel all over the continent of Africa and other continents. Since February we've been here But we went back home because of Corona challenges And God gave us another opportunity to come back To accomplish the mission of winning the lost here in Morocco And we are glad that this week is going to be another Great week in the kingdom of God. From Thursday up to Sunday 10th uh, to 13th. We are going to have, are going to have a miracle gospel crusade. At Kiwanja Kiwanja Chakendeje. 10 to 13th. Uh, From uh, 2 p.m. up to 7 p.m. I know you've heard about this crusade. It's not your first time. The leadership here has been announcing this crusade every Sunday. Our mobile sound in the streets there. Na hata wale watu we have come one more time for our last time to invite you and to be part of this miracle gospel. We want to ask you please to come with those five people that have been praying for. People that you would like to see them giving their lives to Jesus Christ. Bring them, invite them, and come with them at the crusade ground. We trust that God is going to save their life through Jesus Christ. And after they give their life to Christ, we want to encourage you to come with them here in your church. So that they can be disciple and also taught the word of God. We are also blessed to have the fire conference. And this fire conference is going to take place here in Carver Assemblies of God. We want to thank Calvary Assemblies of God leadership. Bishop, thank you for allowing us to have our fire conference here. We appreciate all the resources you've given us to have the conference done. The sound system, the chairs, and everything. And also disorganizing your weekly programs. Thank you so much, Bishop, for allowing us to be here. And I want to encourage you, please, as the hosts, be there. All churches are going to be gathered here. We are expecting to have an overwhelming number. We shall have screens outside. And tents over there. The number is going to be overwhelming. So I want to encourage you. As the host. Come early and get your seat there. Because if you come late, you are going to sit outside. And, and yet you are a member at home. Except if you are saying, Me, I am a member, let me stand up and, and give the chair to you. Know, the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you coming? Mm -hmm. 
Are you going to be part of the uh, fire conference? Let me see people are saying, I am coming. It's going to be a wonderful time of revival. It's going to be a time of inspiring your life. And I know that your life will never be the same again. Hallelujah. Wherever we have been, we have seen the Lord doing great things. And we believe that the same things are going to happen here. In the name of Jesus. Let's turn our Bibles for the word of God. And we want to turn our Bibles from the book of Matthew. Chapter 28 verse 19 to 20. I would love, love to read from 16 but because of time I will read only those two verses. And then I will jump to Mark chapter 16. Let's read together the word of God. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And Lord, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Mark chapter 16 Verse 14 to 20 My Bible reads Later he appeared to the eleven And they sat at the table And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after his, he had risen. And he said to them, go into the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly... It will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Watashika nyoka hata wakinywa kitu cha kufisha hakita wadhuru kabisa. Wataweka mikono yao juu ya wagonjwa nao watapata afya. So then after the Lord has spoken to them he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Basi wana yesu bada kusema nao akachukuli wajiu minguni akakete mkono wakume wa mungu nao wale wakatoka wakakubiri kote kote wana akitenda kazi pamoja nao na kulithibitisha lile neno kwa ishara zilizo fuatana nalo. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Your word is living and active. Your word says the entrance of your word brings forth life. And brings light and understanding to the simple. Speak to us this afternoon. Touch us, Lord, through the power of your word. And revive us, Lord. And inspire us, Lord, to do your will. To return to what you have called us to do. Welcome, you Holy Spirit of God. That you take over this service. And speak to us. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This moment I want to share with us about a message I've called Christ Mission, Our Mission. I want to share with us Nataka tushirikiane Kazi is mission? Yeah Okay And work? Work, that's a job, like a job. job. And, Okay I know, I know Kiswahili is so rich <laughs> Kiswahili ni kipana sana <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm, I'm trying to learn words. Amen. Amen. You know, we need to understand our mission at the church. We need to understand what are we here for as a church. You as the church of Jesus Christ, what are you here for? What is the business of the church? What is the church doing and what is supposed to do? You see, our mission here on earth is the driving force of every human living person. What drives every human being is the mission and the vision inside of him. And that's why wherever there is no vision, the Bible says people lack restraint. Biblia inasema watu hushindwa kujizuia. People have no direction. Watu wanakosa mwelekeo. People have no where they are going. Hawajui wanakwenda wapi. Because your vision kwa sababu maono yako is your direction. Ndio mwelekeo wako. It is what directs you. Ndicho kinachokupa mwelekeo. Your vision is your life. Hivyo maono yako ndio uhai wako. I always tell people that your vision is your life. Nataka ugeukie watu mjirani yako mwambie kwamba maono yako ndio ya mwelekeo wako. Kwamba maana yake usipokuwa na maono, you don't have life. Maana yake hauna maisha, hauna uzima. Anything can take you. Kwa sababu chochote kinaweza kikakusomba. Let me give you an example. Nataka nikupe mfano. Have you ever found somebody walking in town? He doesn't know where he's going. He has nothing he's doing. And whoever he meets will go with him. If he finds someone walking this direction, he also go that direction. He has no reason why he's in town. He has no reason why he's there. And because he has no vision, na kwa sababu hana maono, he doesn't know what he's doing and what he's supposed to be doing. Ajui anafanya nini na kipi anapaswa kufanya. He's tossed by every wind, he moves by every wind. Ana sukumwa sukumwa na kupeperushwa na kila upepo. I say, ndio maana nikasema, that your vision is your life. Kwamba maono yako ndio maisha yako. Ask your neighbor, do you have a vision for your life? Muulize jirani je una maono kwa ajili ya maisha yako? Do you have any plan? Je, unao mpango wa aina yoyote? What is your purpose as an individual? Kusudi lako wewe binafsi ni lipi? The same way. Hivyo hivyo. The church needs to understand her vision. Kanisa linapaswa kujua maono yake. What are we called for? Tumeitwa kwa ajili ya nini? What are we here for? Tuko hapa kwa ajili ya kusudi gani? What are we here? What are we supposed to do? As a person without vision is not a person. Kama vile ambavyo tunavosema basi mtu asiye na maono si mtu. So is the church without a vision? Na hivyo ndivyo lilivyo kanisa lisipokuwa na maono. I want us to remind ourselves. Hivyo nataka tukumbushane. What is our mission here on earth? Kwamba hilo ndilo jukumu au kusudi letu hapa duniani? 
What is our purpose at the church of Jesus Christ? Remember, when I'm talking about the church, I'm not talking about this beautiful building. I'm not talking about the chairs you're sitting on. I'm not talking about a beautiful sound that we have. I am talking about you. Because you are the church of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The church means the sought out ones. Kanisa manake ni wale walio teuliwa. The call out ones. Wale ambao wameitwa wametengwa. The Lord has called out of darkness. Hao ndio ambao Yesu amewatoa kule katika giza. Jesus has saved. Ya wale ambao Yesu amewaokoa. And he called them. Na akawaita. He sought out of them. Na akawatenga. And they belong to him. Na hao sasa ni mali yake Yesu. Now tell your neighbor next to you. Mwambie jirani aliye karibu nawe. You are the church of Jesus Christ. Mwambie wewe niwe kanisa la Kristo. I want to hear you louder and clear. Nataka nisikie sauti yako ikisema kwa nguvu. Tell your neighbor you are the church of Jesus. Mwambie jirani yako kwa nguvu wewe ndiwe kanisa la Kristo. And tell yourself and say I am the church of Jesus Christ. Na ujiambie mwenyewe useme mimi ndimi kanisa la Kristo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is Jesus calling us to do? Yesu ametuita kufanya nini? If the church has to know her mission, kanisa linayo sababu, we need to look at the mission of G of Christ of the church. Na hiyo ni kutazama ile kazi ama kusudi la Kristo kwa ajili ya kanisa. If the church needs to know the calling upon herself. Kanisa linapaswa lijue wito lilioitiwa. We have to know what God has called us to do. Na kama tunapaswa kujua kile ambacho Mungu ametupia. We need to know what was the mission of Jesus Christ. Basi imetupaswa kujua jukumu ama kazi ya Kristo ilikuwa ni ipi. Christians need to know what was the master's mission. Lazima tujue kazi iliyomleta Bwana wetu. All of us Jesus is our master. Sisi wote tuliopo hapa Kristo ndiye Bwana wetu. Is Jesus your master? Yesu ni Bwana wako. Jesus is our master. Yesu ni Bwana wetu. And for us to know our mission, na hivyo imetupaswa kujua kazi yetu. We need to know our master's mission. Basi ni lazima tujue kazi ya Bwana ya Bwana wetu. I want to give a simple illustration. Nataka niulize swali jepesi. For the members to know their mission. Kwa washirika kujua kusudi lao ama kazi yao. They yao. need to first understand the mission and the vision of their bishop. Basi lazima wajue maono na jukumu la askofu wao ama kazi ya askofu wao. All of us at Calvary Assemblies of God. Sisi wote waumini wa Calvary Assemblies of God. We are following the mission that God gave you. Tumefuata maono na kazi ambayo askofu amepewa. Maono ambayo anayo askofu. That building you see behind there. Hilo jengo kubwa unaloliona hapo nje. It is the vision that God gave him. Ni maono ambayo Mungu amempatia askofu. He came and told us all. Na yeye amekuja akatushirikisha maono hayo. God has given me a vision. Kwamba Mungu amenipa maono hayo. To build a cathedral. Kujenga hekalu kubwa. God's temple, God's sanctuary. And all of us, we said we are standing with you, Bishop. We are building the house of God. That's why today I saw people giving money. Because somebody has a mission to accomplish. Because somebody has a mission to accomplish. Thank you for standing with the servant of God. Na hivyo nyinyi mnapaswa kushukuriwa kwa kusimama na mtumishi wa Mungu. Kwa na hivyo ndivyo ilivyo kwa sababu kuna maono pia na kazi kwa ajili ya huduma. Nataka unisikilize mwana wa Mungu. Our master has got a vision and a mission. Bwana wetu ana maono. And we need to understand his mission. Na lazima tujue maono yake. We need to understand his purpose of Lazima tujue kusudi lake. What is the mission of Jesus Christ? Je, kazi ya Kristo ni hii. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are called Christians. Sisi tunaitwa wa Kristo. The reason why we are called Christians. Sababu kwa nini tunaitwa wa Kristo? Because we are following Jesus Christ. Ni kwa sababu sisi tunamfuata Yesu Kristo. We behave like him. 
Tunakuwa na tabia kama yeye. We talk like him. Tunaenenda kama yeye. We move like him. Tunatembea kama yeye. We do his work. Tunatenda neno lake. That's why we are called Christians. Ndio maana tunaitwa wakristo. How many people are Christians here? Wangapi ni wakristo hapa? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is the mission of Jesus? Mkazi ya Kristo ni ipi? What is his business? Biashara yake ni ipi? Jesus came with one mission. Yesu Kristo alikuja kwa kwa ajili ya kazi How moja tu. How want to know the mission of Jesus? Wangapi wanataka kujua kazi ya Kristo? The mission of Jesus. Kazi ya Kristo. He came alikuja to seek kutafuta and to save na kuokoa that which was lost kile kilichopotea in john chapter 10 katika yohana sura ya 10 he says like this anasema namna hii the devil came to kill and to destroy kama mwivi aji ila aibe kuchinja na kuharibu lakini mimi nimekuja that we might have life ili muwe na uzima and life in abundance tena muwe na hotel jesus came yesu kristo amekuja but those who are dead kwa ajili ya wale wafu wale waliopotea wale waliogizani ili waione nuru ili waweze kutolewa huko na kuokolewa na kuokolewa toka katika nguvu za giza wana asifiwe i am among those people mimi ni mmoja kati ya watu wa Mungu na Yesu ameniokoa na Jesus Christ found in darkness Yesu alinikuta gizani. Praise the Lord you were among those Na wewe mtukuze Bwana ulikuwa kati yao. You your sins and your darkness. Bwana akakutoa huko gizani. But when Jesus came. Yesu akaja. He found you. Akakukuta huko. He delivered you. Akakufungua. He saved your life. Akaokoa uhai wako. Today. Na leo you are called I am saved. Unasema nimeokolewa. I am a child of God. Unasema ni mwana wa Mungu. I am the business of Jesus. Hiyo ndio biashara ya Kristo. Tell your neighbor the business of Jesus. Kwa jirani biashara ya Yesu. Is to save the lost. Ni kuokoa waliopotea. You know We need to know that Jesus did not come for political ambitions. Lazima tujue kwamba Kristo hakuja kwa ajili ya siasa. He not come for political, you know, you know, political platforms. Yeye hakuja kwa ajili ya mikutano ya kisiasa. Israel thought Jesus had come to restore the kingdom back to them. Wao walizani Israeli kwamba Yesu amekuja kuwarudishia ule ufalme. They thought he had come to restore the kingdom from the powers of Roman Empire. Wakajua ya kwamba amekuja kuwarudishia ufalme wao kutoka kwenye nguvu za Warumi. They saw him as a political leader. Kwa hivyo walizani ni kiongozi wa kisiasa. They saw him as the king in political spheres. Wakamuona kama mfalme katika mazingira ya kisiasa. No, that's not my mission. Yesu akasema hiyo sio huduma yangu. My mission is to give eternal life to those who will believe in me. Kazi yangu ni kuwapa uzima wa milele wale waniamini. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My mission is not a threat. Yeye kazi yake sio ya kisiasa. Wala sio ya ufalme wa kidunia. Lakini ni ufalme wa mbinguni. His heart is out for the lost. Na hivyo yeye jukumu lake ni kwenda kwa ajili ya kuwafikia waliopotea. Jesus. Kazi ya Yesu is out for the lost. Ni kwenda kuwafuata waliopotea. The passion of Jesus. Kazi ya Kristo is for the lost. Ni kwa ajili ya wale waliopotea. The Bible say that he left all the glories of heaven. Na akawacha utukufu wote mbinguni. And he came for the lost. Akaja kwa ajili ya waliopotea. He came for me and me. Akaja kwa ajili ya wewe na mimi. That's what the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter number 19. Ndio maana Biblia inasema katika kitabu cha Luka 19. And verse 10. Na mstari wa 8. The son of man came. Sema kwamba mwana wa Adamu alikuja. And to save kwa ajili ya kutafuta na kuokoa wale walio kile kilichopotea na hiyo ndio kusudi la Yesu Kristo kutafuta na kuokoa that which was lost kile kilichopotea the bible tells us biblia inatuambia mission was accomplished kazi yake ilikamilishwa upon the cross pale msalabani when he died on the cross alipokufa msalabani he saved people akaokoa watu he restored the world akaurejesha akarejesha ule watu wa mbinguni hallelujah hallelujah praise god he accepted to die ah tukuzwe bwana ambaye ameturejesha praise god he defeated the cross atukuzwe bwana alitupa ushindi msalabani praise god on the cross 
Atumkuzwe bwana kwa ajili ya msalaba. He lifted up his voice and said. Kwa maana alipaza sauti yake na kusema. It is done. Imekwisha. It is finished. Akasema imekwisha. My work on the earth is done. Kazi ya ulimwenguni imekwisha. My mission of salvation is done. Kazi ya wokovu imefanyika. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are saved by the power. Tumeokolewa wa na nguvu hii. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Ya damu ya Yesu Kristo. What is our mission as a church? Kama kanisa, kazi yetu ni nini? What is your work? Kazi yako ni ipi? Is it to sit in church? Je, ni kuimba kanisani? Is it to clap your hands? Kupiga makofi kanisani? And enjoy the word of God alone? Kufurahia uwepo wa Mungu kanisani? Why are we here for? Upo hapa kwa kusudi gani? What are we here for? Tuko hapa kwa ajili ya nini? Listen to me child of God. Naomba unisikilize mwana wa Mungu. The church is here for souls. Ye kanisa lipo kwa ajili ya kuokoa nafsi. I said the church is here for souls. Nasema kanisa lipo kwa ajili ya roho za watu. Jesus Christ, Yesu Kristo has entrusted us. Ametukabidhi sisi. The continuation of his mission. Mwendelezo wa lile jukumu ama kazi yake. Kwa ajili ya kuwaokoa waliokuja. Na ndio maana alipokuwa anawaita wanafunzi. That's what he say. Hiki ndicho alichosema. Akawaita. And he said follow me. Akasema nifuate. I will make you fishers of men. Akasema nitawafanya wavuvi wa watu. Hallelujah. And he called them to go out. Na akawaita akiwaambia watoke. To preach the gospel kwenda kuhubiri njiri to seek and save the lost kutafuta na kuokoa waliopotea praise jesus christ bwana yesu asifiwe our mission is one kazi yetu ni moja our business is one biashara yetu ni moja winning the lost tunahitaji waliopotea and bringing them in the kingdom of god tunawahitaji waje kwenye ufalme wa mungu our number one job as the church ndio jukumu letu na kwanza the purpose of our being here on earth kusudi la kwetu la kwanza kama kanisa preach the gospel ni kuhubiri injili and win the lost kwa ukoo kuwafikia waliopotea and them in the church na kuwarudisha kanisani na kuwafundisha and we send them again na kuwatuma na wao bring the lost waende wa kalete wengine kwa ajili ya kuvuna nafsi na kuwafundisha na wao watume tena warudishe wengine mpaka Yesu anarudi Hallelujah Hallelujah You know I was searching the meaning of making disciples of all nations Nilikuwa natafuta maana halisi ya hao wanafunzi wanaotuma kwa ajili ya kazi And this is what I found out Na hiki ndicho nilichogundua The word making disciples of all, of all nations hili neno na kuwafanya wote kuwa wanafunzi means lina maana hii christianizing nations ya kwamba ni kufanya mataifa yageuke kuwa ya, ya kikristo making every language every tribe yani every person a christian a follower of jesus kufanya christ kufanya kila taifa kila lugha kila kabila kuwa wa kristo kuwa wafuasi wa kristo listen to me child of god mwana wa mungu naomba unisikilize jesus did not die for a few chosen ones Yesu hakufa kwa ajili ya wote ule wachache. He did not die for the Tanzanians only. Yesu hakufa kwa ajili ya watanzania pekee. He did not die for the Israeli only. Yesu hakufa kwa ajili ya waisraeli pekee. He did not die for men only. Yesu hakufa kwa ajili ya wanaume pekee. He did not die for women alone. Yesu hakufa kwa ajili ya wanawake pekee. Jesus died for the whole world. Yesu alikufa kwa ajili ya ulimwengu mzima. The Bible says that the whole world might be saved. Biblia inasema ili kwamba ulimwengu wote uokolewe. It is the will of God. Hayo ndio mapenzi ya Mungu. It is the will of Jesus. Na ndio mapenzi ya Kristo. It is the desire of God. Ndio haja ya Mungu. It is the desire of Jesus to see kill a moon to to say to seek everyone becoming born again and see that everyone and okoka how i pray nina muomba mungu that the whole world kwamba ulimwengu mzima will be covered uweze kufunikwa with the love of jesus na upendo wa yesu how i pray nina omba that men and women wake kwa wao of all tribes wa makabila yote of all languages wa lugha zote will come to know jesus waje kwa yesu as the lord and the savior of their lives awe bwana na mwokozi wa maisha yao let me tell you this again. Heaven is too big. 
Mbingu ni kubwa mno to accommodate all of us. Kuweza sisi tu wachache kuingia mle. Nili kubwa mno. Let me repeat that. Heaven is too big. Yaani mbingu ni kubwa mno. And is able to accommodate the whole world. Ulimwengu wote unaweza kuingia. Have we ever known that heaven was not I mean hell was not created by people? Hivi unajua kwamba kuzimu haikuwa imekusudiwa waingie wanadamu. Hell was created for the devil. Kuzimu ilikuwa imekusudiwa aingie ibilisi na mapepo yake and his evil spirits na mapepo yake machafu Heaven na rocha created for people of god lakini mbingu iliandaliwa kwa ajili ya watu praise the name of jesus Wa christ Heaven is big for all of us. Mbingu ni kubwa inatutosha. And we must see our brothers and sisters. Na hivyo ninawasii ndugu zangu. Joining us and going to heaven. Ya kwamba mngangane katika injili hii tuwavute waingie huko. Our job is to go out and preach this blessed gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and bring people in his kingdom. Jukumu leo tulikwenda kuhubiri injili ya Yesu uko nje na kuvuna watu na kuletea Yesu Kristo. This work of the gospel is not for the few chosen ones. Hii kazi ya injili si kwa ajili ya wateule wachache. It's not for Reinhard Bonke alone. Wala sio kwa ajili ya wale wanaompenda wewe na nikoke. Hii si kwa ajili ya wanaompenda mtumishi fulani. Hii sio kwa ajili ya wainjilisti wachache. Hii sio kwa ajili ya wachungaji na maskofu. Bali hii kazi ya kuhubiri injili ya kila mshirika aliyemwamini Yesu Kristo. Na nipo hapa kwa ajili ya kukwambia. Kila Mkristo ni mwinjilisti. Am I speaking to someone here today? I'm saying that you are an evangelist. Nasema wewe niwe mwinjilisti mwenyewe. You are an evangelist. Wewe niwe mwinjilisti. And you. Na wewe. 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 And you and you and you. Na wewe na wewe na wewe na wewe. All of us. Wote sisi. We are soul winners. Ni wavunaji wa roho. Next to you that you are a soul winner. Hebu ungeokea jirani yako mwambie kwamba wewe ni mvunaji wa roho. Shake him a bit if he doesn't want to listen to you. Kama unaona hakuelewi mtingisha tingisha kidogo. You are a soul winner. Mwambie wewe ndiwe mvunaji wa hizo nafsi au roho zilizopotea. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise God. I'm part of the soul winners. Nina mtukuza Bwana kwa sababu nami ni sehemu ya wavunaji wa roho zilizopotea. I'm glad to be a soul winner. Nami ni mvunaji wa hizo nafsi zilizopotea. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, atukuzwe Bwana Yesu. This work is not for few people. Hii kazi si kazi ya watu wachache. It is for the coll- it's a collective responsibility. Hii ni kazi ya ujumla ya wote walioitwa na Yesu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is the challenge that we have in the 21st century. Na hii ni kanisa na kazi tuliyonayo katika karne hii ya 21. Few, few soul winners. Tuko wavunaji wachache mno. Few people getting out to win the lost. Ni wachache mno wanakwenda kuvuna waliopotea. I believe the time the bishop got saved. Ninaamini wakati ambapo Bwana alimwokoa askofu. was feeling a burden to share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wakati wao kina askofu naamini wakati huo kila mmoja aliyeokoka alikuwa na kiu na shauku ya kumwambia. The moment they gave their life to Christ like this. Dakika tu alipompa Yesu fire of the gospel was burning. Moto wa injili ukaanza kuwaka ndani yao. Every time someone would give his life to Christ. Kila mara mmoja alipotoa uhai wake na kuupa Yesu. Maisha yake. to share what has happened upon his or her life. Wakaanza kushuhudia kile ambacho kimetokea baada ya kuupa Yesu maisha yake. I remember the time I gave my life to Jesus. Nakumbuka wakati nilipompa Yesu maisha yake. The gospel was upon my life. Nikaona moto mkali wa injili ukiwaka ndani yao. Every school. Nikaanza kuzunguka kwenye mashule yote. Like this. Nilikuwa kijana mdogo. I was a tiny small boy. Nilikuwa bado mdogo na kiu ya kumtumikia. Kila mmoja alikuwa akinidharau. Fire of preaching and sharing the gospel. Moto wa kuhubiri na kuambia habari za Yesu. Burning in my life. Ulikuwa unawaka ndani yangu. Listen to me child of God. Nisikilize mwana wa Mungu. This century needs revival. 
Katika karne hii uamsho unahitajika mkubwa sana. This generation needs the revival. Kizazi hiki kinahitaji uamsho mkubwa. We need a generation of the soul winners. Hiki ni kizazi cha wavunaji wa nafsi zilizopotea. We need a generation who will not sit down and see people going to hell. Hiki ni kizazi ambacho hakipaswi kufurahia kuona watu wanapenda motoni. People are saying we must preach this gospel. Hiki ni kizazi kinachopaswa kufurahia kuona watu wanakwenda mbinguni. Lazima tuubiri. In my mind na hii ndio iliyo ndani ya ufahamu wangu. If Paul would come in this world today. Kwamba endapo akirejea leo. What would he think of the church of today? Atalionaje kanisa la sasa? What would he think of the church of today? Atalitazamaje kanisa la leo? Men preach the gospel in season and out of season. Kwa ambayo alikusudia liubiri injili wakati ufao na wakati usio and in chains. Je, ni wakati ambao tuko na kusudia watu wakibaki minyoyo? Even in a shipwreck. Ni wakati ambapo mtume alihubiri wakati ule ikiwa meli imepigwa na dhoruba. Today, akiwa na minyororo. We have got all the resources. Paulo akitazama leo na rasilimali zote tulizo nazo. We have got all the resources. Kanisa lililo na kila kitu leo. We have got all the monies. Likiwa na fedha. We have all got all the talents. Likiwa na vipawa vizuri. We have failed to reach our world. Lakini tumeshindwa kuhubiri neno la Mungu. We must come back to our mission. Lazima turejee katika kazi yetu. We must come back to our calling. Lazima turejee katika wito tulioitiwa. We must repent and be revived. Inabidi tutubu na kuanza kuwasha moto. One of the moto. greatest priorities of the church today. Je, ni vipaumbele vipi vya kanisa sasa? Is to mobilize the believers. Ni kuwakusanya waumini to do the work of evangelism. Na kuifanya kazi ya uinjilisti. Jesus commands us Yesu ametuagiza to preach the gospel. Kuhubiri injiri in Matthew chapter 28 where we pray katika Mathayo 28 ambapo tumesoma. The work of preaching the gospel is a command. Kazi ya kuhubiri injiri ni agizo. It is not an option. Wala sio uchaguzi. It is not something to bargain about. Si jambo ambalo unaweza ukachagua na kusema nitasacha. The gospel is a command. Hiyo ni agizo. The theologians call it the great commission. Wale wana theolojia wanaita ndio wito mkuu. But I also call it the supreme commission. Mimi ninaita ni kazi ya mahakama ya kimbingu ya mfalme. This is the order. This yani maana yake ni agizo. Kutoka kwa Bwana mkubwa Yesu Kristo. Hallelujah. Hii ni command kutoka kwa Bwana mkubwa Yesu Kristo. Hili, this is the command from the great master Jesus Christ. And we must say, yes, Afande, we are going because you have commanded. Kila moja inabidi aseme ndio Afande tunakwenda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do I have people here today? Je, leo ninawaona watu hapa? We are saying ndio Afande. Ambao wanasema yes, Afande. We are afande. going to preach the gospel. Tunakwenda kuhubiri injili. We shall move wherever you send Tunda us. Tunakwenda unapotaka twende. To me, child of God. The church must go. Kanisa lazima liende. Go where to the lost. Kwenda kule kwa waliopotea. Go in the highways. Kuko katika mabarabara ya njia ni makubwa. Kwenda kwenye masoko. Go to the prostitution houses. Kule wanakugwali koma kahaba. Share Jesus Christ. Na kumubiri Yesu Kristo. Want to let you know today that Jesus is more applicable outside there. Huko katika kizazi cha sasa Yesu ana nafasi kubwa huko kuliko huko ndani. That's where he feels comfortable to be. Na ndiko ambako wachache wanaona kwamba wako wanaweza kwenda kuhubiri huko. Listen to me child of God. Lakini niwaambie wana wa Mungu. I know some of you you think Jesus is comfortable in the church. Na wengi nadhani mnadhani kwamba Yesu ana furaha sana hapa ndani kanisani. But let me blow your minds off today. Lakini leo nataka mbadilishe mtazamo. Jesus feels good outside where sinners are. Yesu anaona raha sana kule nje kuliko hapa mkiwa ndani. Where he came for those are the people he yes. came to. Amefia watu wa kule ninyi tayari mmeshaingia zizini. He that he lives 99 and he goes for one. Amesema ana uwezo wa kuacha 99 kwenda kwa ajili ya mmoja aliyepotea. Is he feeling comfortable outside? Kwa hivyo Yesu anaona raha zaidi akiwa kule njia kiumiliwa kuliko hapa mlipo kusanyika 
He knows you already belong to him. Maana anajua tayari ninyi ni wakwake. Hakuna shida with you. There is no problem with you because you are already sons of the kingdom. Kwa sababu ninyi tayari ni wana wa Mungu. You are already the children of God. Tayari ninyi ni wana wa Mungu. But his heart and his tears macho yake na moyo wake are for the lost. Yanawaangalia waliopotea. The people that touch his heart. Hao ndio watu ambao wanagusa moyo wake. That's why he wants to be there. Ndio maana anataka muende huko. Have you ever asked yourself? Umeshawahi kujiuliza? Why Jesus was not crucified in the temple? Kwa nini Yesu hakusurubiwa ekaluni? Between two pulpits? Kwa nini hakusurubiwa mahali ambako pana madhabahu mawili na Yesu microphones and good microphones kukiwa na microphone nzuri haleluya haleluya because he came for those that are lost yeye amekuja kwa ajili ya wale kule nje waliopotea and even on the cross hata msalabani one sinner says yes to jesus mtenda dhambi moja alikuwa karibu na yesu jesus said today we're going to be together in the paradise of my father yesu akamwambia na wewe utakuwa na mimi leo paradiso ya baba yangu we must go tell your neighbor we must go mge ukiwa jirani yako mwambie lazima jirani twende we must go for the lost lazima twende kwa waliopotea our eyes must look out macho lazima yatazame nje and our feet must be ready to go na miguu yetu iwe na utayari wa kwenda taking the gospel of peace kwa ajili ya kuhubiri injili taking the gospel of salvation na kuhubiri injili ya wokovu taking the gospel kupeleka injili kwa mataifa haleluya 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 i could not dream coming to morogoro wala sikuwahi kuota kuja morogoro can you can you imagine our borders were closed Unaweza kaamini kwamba bado mipaka ya nchi yetu inafungwa. still closed in Uganda. Wewe unaweza kashangaa kule mipaka yetu ya nchi ya Uganda bado imefungwa. Nobody is allowed to cross. Ya hakuna mtu anaruhusiwa kuvuka mpaka But this is what I told Jesus. Lakini hiki ndicho nilichomwambia Yesu. I have a mission to accomplish in Morogoro. Mimi bado nina jukumu la kumaliza Morogoro. I must be in Morogoro. Lazima niwe Morogoro. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I heard that Morogoro has opened Tanzania has opened for the gospel. Niliposikia kwamba Tanzania iko tayari kwa ajili ya injili. And we also said we are going there. Nami nikasema basi na mimi ninakwenda huko. People were telling us there is corona there they are deceiving. We said we are going. Watu wakanasema ninyi msisikilize wanadanganya kule Tanzania corona bado ipo tukasema sisi tutakwenda. I God make a way for me to cross. Nikamwambia Mungu tengeneza njia niende. One day I was dreaming. Siku moja nilikuwa naota. I was in my bed. Nikiwa kitandani. So one of my pastors called me. The moja kati ya wachung- kati ya wachungaji akaniita. He had a patient in the hospital. Yeye alikuwa ana mgonjwa hospitalini. And he called me in the middle of the night. Ilikuwa ni usiku wa manane. And I told him, nikamwambia, Bwana, I am not here. I am in Morogoro for the crusade. Nikamwambia mimi umenipigia nije lakini siko nimeshaondoka niko Morogoro kwa ajili ya mtaani. Yaani niko kitandani ninaota ndoto. And this brother the pastor I was with him a day before. Na huyo mchungaji nilikuwa naye hapo awali. And he knows the borders are closed no way out. Na wala hakuwa anajua kwamba nitatoka. And I said I am in Morogoro. Kwa hiyo kwenye ndoto nikamwambia mimi niko Morogoro. He, he switched off the phone he could not understand me. Akazima simu akunielewa. And my wife woke me up. Na 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 mke wangu akaniamsha kitandani. Have you heard what you have said? Akasema aishe, hivi unajua unajua ulichokiongea hapo ukiwa ndotoni umelala? I woke up. Nikaamka. I said what did I say? Kaambia nimesema nini? I'm in Morogoro. Kwa kama umesema huko Morogoro wewe. My mind was in Morogoro. Akili yangu ilikuwa iko Morogoro. My heart was in Morogoro for the Lord. wangu ulikuwa huko Morogoro kwa ajili ya injili. And let me tell you God made a way for us to cross the border. Mungu akatengeneza njia tukavuka mpakani. You can't tell us how we cross. Hata uwezi kuamini ni tumevukaje. And I cannot tell you how we cross. Na sikwambii tumevukaje. But one thing I know, ila ninachojua, we crossed and we are here. Tumevuka na tuko hapa. We did not pass through the shortcuts. Wala hatukupitia njia za kona kona. We passed through the border. Tumepita pale pale mpakani. You know our passports were stamped. Na zetu When I brought my passport stamped, 
I said this is Jesus Jesus wants me in the field Hallelujah Hallelujah Our hearts are burning to see the soul We cannot sleep until we see souls in the kingdom Glory to Jesus Our feet must be ready to go our hands must be ready to receive the harvest. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. Let me tell you the harvest is so great. And I have good news today, this week we are going to see a great harvest. Our hands are ready to receive the harvest in the kingdom. Millions and millions of people are going to give their life to Jesus. And hell is going to lose. And the kingdom of God is going to increase. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. We must go into the harvest field. I want you to know that the harvest is ready for us. In the marketplace where you work every day, every morning. In the office where you sit every day. In the university where you lecture. There are many. The harvest is so great. In the school where you go every day. The harvest is so great. Yesterday but one I was moving in town preparing the crusade. And I went somewhere. And I talked about the crusade. When I moved out of their office. Few ladies came following me. And I said, Pastor, this is what we are going through. Pray for us. This is ABCD. And we prayed for them. They were crying. They were in tears. And one person gave her life to Jesus Christ. When you are in church, you may not know what is happening outside until you step out then you realize the harvest is really planted hallelujah why are we seated in church why are we so relaxed why are we so complacent Tell your neighbor we must wake up and go. We are living in the last day. Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must make sure we populate heaven before he comes back. The Bible says the gospel of the kingdom must be preached. And then the end shall come. The devil is working very hard. The devil yes, is working so hard to take people to hell. No wonder why the world is turning upside down. You hear all kinds of evils increasing. Yesterday, no, a few weeks ago, Wiki church as there is a Peter. We had an overnight at PAG here there. Sorry. PAG. PAG. We were having an overnight at PAG. PAG TAG. PAG. PAG. PAG here Msanfu. Atulikuwa pale PAG Msanfu pale. And all of a sudden I saw, you know, vans ferrying people, young men and young women. Nikaona gari na pita pale na vijana wamejaa. In the middle of the night. Katikati usiku. Coming for boozing and you know, and clapping. There is a devil there in that club. Naked young girls. Naked women. And my heart was burning. I said, this should not be. We have got a big work to do. 
The devil is advancing his kingdom. Yeye shetani anatanua sana mipaka yake. We must arise. Lazima tuinuke. Advance the kingdom of God. Na kuendesha na kupeleka mbele ufalme. The devil advances. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. We must do this work very quickly. Lazima twende kwa haraka sawa sawa na maono haya. Because we are left with few 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 years. Kwa sababu miaka hiyo baki ni michache mno kabla ya kufika. Christ is coming back. Yes, wanarudi. Any time he's coming. Wakati wa mwisho umefika. And we want to go with our brothers and sisters. Kama unataka kwenda pamoja na ndugu zako. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many are saying we must go with our brothers and sisters? Wangapi wanasema lazima twende na ndugu zetu? We must go with our family members. Lazima twende na ndugu zetu. Our sons must go to heaven. Watoto wetu lazima waende mbinguni. Our daughters must go to heaven. Mbibinti zetu lazima waende mbinguni. And you who will share the gospel. Wewe na mimi tutasema habari za njia. We are the witnesses of Jesus Christ. Sisi ndio mashahidi wa Yesu Kristo. And we must not keep quiet. Na hatupaswi kunyamaza. We must rise. Lazima tuinuke. Without fear. Pasipo hofu. Without timid. Pasipo kuopa. The gospel to where na kupeleka injili inakotakiwa kufika. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. My prayer for you today. Maombi yangu leo is that God will inspire you. Ya kwamba Bwana akupe uvuvio. God will release a fresh fire of the gospel upon you. Moto kwa ajili ya injili. That God will open your heart again. Mungu afungue moyo wako. God will open your eyes to see. Afungue macho yako kuona. That God will send you. Bwana akutume. Into his harvest field. Katika shamba la Bwana. Stand up on your feet everybody. Simama kwa miguu yako. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. Thank you Lord. Asante Bwana. God Mungu is so concerned about his people. Anahusika sana na watu wake. Jesus is concerned about his people. Yes, anahusika sana na watu wake. He doesn't want anybody to go to hell. Anataka kila mtu aende mbinguni. We have a duty to tell the world that Jesus is the only savior. Tunayo jukumu la kuwasema Yesu pekee ndio mwokozi. I want to ask you if you're there. Nataka nikuulize kama uko hapa. You are feeling this is my world. Na unaona ya kwamba neno hili ni la kwangu I must preach this gospel. Kwamba oh lazima ninuke nikaubiri. I want you to put up your hand. Nataka unyanyue tu. We want to pray together this moment. Nataka tuombe pamoja. The Lord will revive us. Bwana afanye uhuru. The Lord will empower his spirit upon our lives again. Na nguvu yake ikae ndani yetu tena. And the fire of sharing, witnessing and winning the laws will come upon us. Moto wa kuhubiri injili uweze kurudi tena. Let me ask you to put up your hands. Nataka unyoshe mikono yako. In the name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu. Thank you Jesus. Oh, asante Yesu. You died for every human being. Umekufa kwa ajili ya kila mwanadamu. You came that the world might be saved through you. Umekuja ili ulimwengu uweze You came that your people might find life. Find joy. Find eternity. You have given us that responsibility. Lord, we seem to be stagnant and complacent. But Lord, I pray that you release your spirit upon our lives again. Ninaomba ya kwamba urejeshe na kuhuisha roho ya kumbuka katika ndani yetu that we might be your witnesses. Upya ili tuwe mashahidi. Break the chains of complacence. Uvunje minyororo ya utulivu. Break the chains of lessness. Uvunje minyororo ya uvivu. In the name of Jesus Christ. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Fire of your gospel burn again in our lives. Moyo wa moto wa injili uwake mioyoni mwetu. Lift up your voice and talk to God. Anza kupaza sauti yako na uzungumze na Bwana. Talk to God, talk to God. Paza sauti yako. The God may increase that burden upon your life. Paza sauti yako Bwana. That he may increase the grace of sharing the gospel. Ili Bwana ongeze moto There are some people who are shy when it comes to the sharing. Ili uendelee kungara katika kuhubiri. There are some people who feel weak and so discouraged when it comes to the preaching of the word. Uendelee kuhubiri. God has not given you the spirit of timid. Bwana hajakupa roho ya uoga. God has given us the spirit of power and stamina. Bwana amekupa roho ya nguvu na upendo. Talk to God to revive you. Ili Bwana akuamshe. Talk to God to revive your spirit. Bwana yamshe roho yako. Talk to him to increase the grace of sharing the gospel. Bwana akupe nguvu ya kuhubiri. In the mighty name of the Lord. 
In the mighty name of the Lord. Father, we pray that you release your holy anointing again. Anoint our lips, anoint our tongues. Anoint us with your fire, O God. That we may go out without fear. But we may go out with the power of your word. Share the risen Jesus. In the mighty name of the Lord. I want to pray with someone right here. If you feel you have a burden for the gospel, you have a burden for witnessing, for sharing this Jesus. Right in one minute, come in front and we pray together. Come forward, come forward. In the name of Jesus, God wants to revive you. God wants to power his spirit upon your life. He wants to fill you with his spirit once again. In the name of Jesus. That you will receive the courage. You will receive the boldness. To move out without shyness, without fear. Put up your hands in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Asante, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Asante, yes. Thank you, Lord. Asante, yes. Thank you, Lord. Asante, yes. That your spirit is rekindling them. Your spirit is leading the fire again. In the mighty name of Jesus. You want to fill them, Lord, with the burden once again. The burden, Lord, to move out. This is going to be a generation of sharing your word across the continents of Africa. In the mighty name of the Lord. They will not sleep. They will not relax. They will not be complacent of God. The community is waiting for them. The cities are waiting for them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit again. Be filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Receive the fire of the Holy Spirit again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you are here, you have not given your life to Jesus. Let me give you this opportunity to put up your hand when we pray together. You've not given your life to Jesus. You came in this service and you want to give your life to Christ. Put up your hand wherever you are. Thank you, Lord. Let me ask the choir to give us worship song. You came in this service if not given your life to Jesus. This is your opportunity. Oh, hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
ni kama nini kwa sababu mtumishia huyu ametuhudumia tangu asubuhi basi tu na soda moja angalau tumbariki tu ana gari wanatembea naye sio vibaya japo kwa anaandaa mkutano lakini waendelee kuona upendo wa kanisa letu sawa eh fanya chochote kwa ajili ya hicho chochote ulicho nacho angalau atakumbuka pale kana na alipita siku moja akafanya wema huu sawa so, kwa naomba tafadhali inuka chochote ulicho nacho tutoe soda kwa ajili yao alafu tutamshukuru Mungu na wale wanafunzi wa Jordan kama mpo kama mpo katikati yetu wanafunzi wa Jordan basi njo tuweze kuomba pamoja na nyinyi na kama we pia uko hapa ni mgonjwa basi unaweza ukaja tukaomba na wewe pia basi njo Mungu akubariki Mungu akubariki Mungu akubariki kwa hicho unachokifanya Mungu akubariki sana Mungu akubariki Mungu akubariki Mungu akubariki